Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. Welcome back to the next PL300 test prep question. Today we're going to be looking at a DAX function related to sales that has time intelligence built into it. Now in order to use time intelligence functions, you're going to be required to have a date table in your model and it needs to be marked as a date table. From there, you're going to be able to use a lot of the DAX functionality to calculate sales from a specific time period. Now with these DAX time intelligence functions, there are several that do the same thing, but there's also some functions that are built off of other functions. And so we're gonna be looking specifically at the difference between two, one is called parallel period, and the other one is same period last year. With parallel period, you have to specify the time frame in which you want to go back and modify so you can specify the months or years you want to go back in time with the same period last year function it takes wherever you're at in the current filter context and goes back to that same period last year and you only have to specify where your dates are located in your model which is always the date table date column so we're going to be looking at several DAX functions and I don't have time to go through all of the DAX function functionality. So in the description, I'm going to put a link to several other videos that go more in depth on how to use these DAX functions. So let's go ahead and get started. So our question says that we have a Power BI model that contains a table named sales and a related date table. Sales contains a measure named total sales. You need to create a measure that calculates the total sales from the equivalent month of a previous year, how should you complete the calculation? So as we look at this, we have to understand what these DAX functions are going to return. So let's start with calculate. So with calculate, this is going to be anytime you're gonna modify the current filter context. So with calculate, anytime you're going to be looking at a specific filter that is not in the current filter context. So for instance, if I have January through December and I'm looking at a current year, that is the current filter context. If I want to look at anything other than that current year, then I have to modify the filter context to change to look at a different time period. So anytime you're going to modify whatever the current filter context, let's say that you're looking at sales for a specific company and you wanna change it to compare the two against a different company. Well, in that current filter context, you're stuck with that current company and so you would have to modify it. So anytime you're changing whatever the current filter context is, you have to use a calculate function. The next one is the evaluate function. So evaluate is going to essentially return all of the rows and columns in the table. So the evaluate function returns all of the rows and the columns in the table, essentially bringing everything back. When we're dealing with the sum function, this is going to sum up a specific column. And then sum x, its parameters are that we're going to create a summation based off of the table. So the key here is that this is a table expression. So essentially what it does is it returns the table that you specify and then the column that you want to summarize. So understanding these DAX functions is key to this question. So we want to calculate the sales from the previous year. And so let's say that we're in the month of March of 2024. So in the column, in the measure that we created, total sales, 
we have to return the total sales for March of 2023. So we have to modify the current filter context if we're stuck in 2024. And so understanding that, we can see that evaluate is just gonna bring back the entire column and rows in the table. That is not gonna give us the functionality that we need. So we can go ahead and eliminate the evaluate function. It also tells us up here that this is going to be a measure called total sales. So as we look at the parameters for sum and sum X, sum is going to sum up a specific column. We can see that this right here is a measure identified by the brackets. And so because this is a measure, the first parameter of a sum function is going to be a specific column. So this also helps us identify that this is going to be incorrect because we're referencing a measure here. So with a sum function, you would write it like sum of the sales table identified by the tick marks and sales amount column. So this would sum up the sales in the table here, but notice that here we're referencing a measure. And so that tells us that the sum function is not going to be correct because the first parameter here is a measure and we would need the column sales amount. Additionally, with sum X, sum X is going to be a iterator function. So an iterator function looks over a table here and this would be identified as the sales table. So that's the first piece in the DAX function sum X would be the sales table because any X function that you use is going to be a table expression. And so we have the sum of the sales and then we would have the expression that we're going to write and how we want to calculate that summation. And so we can see here that neither one of these is going to use the associated measure as the first piece of information. So we can go ahead and eliminate some X. So that leaves us with calculate. But once again, we have an understanding that calculate is going to modify filter context. So once again, for this scenario, we're gonna be looking at, just so we can keep track, March of 2024. That's what the current filter context is. And we want to return March of 20. 23. So that's the idea here. It says that we want to return the equivalent month from the previous year. And so if the current filter context is March 2024, then we want to return March 2023. We need to modify the filter context and that's exactly what Calculate does. It allows us to modify that current filter context. So we want to calculate total sales. So how do we want to calculate total sales? Well, that brings us down to the next box. So we have dates month to date and total month to date. Well, that would give us the total month to date, but not for the period that we're looking for. We're looking for March of 2023. So we have to tell Power BI in this DAX function, how we wanna modify the filter context. The second piece down here is the filtering requirement. So this tells the calculate function how we want to modify the filter context. Well, we need to go to the previous year. And so there's actually two functions that can do this parallel period and the same period last year can both accomplish the same task. But with parallel period, you have to specify how you want to go back in that parallel period. 
So specify the period. So while yes, parallel period could work in this scenario, it does not have enough parameters in the second piece of the question to satisfy the use of parallel period. So the same period last year function is actually going to allow us to go from wherever we're at in the current filter context to the same period last year. It's a pre-built function that goes back one year. And so this would be the function that we would use because there is not enough parameters to use parallel period, although it is available to use if we had all the correct information. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate these as well. Now the last piece is how we're going to calculate the same period last year. And this is important for all time intelligence functions. When you're using time intelligence functions, you have to specify where your dates are located. And so that's the third piece down here is where are your actual dates located in your model? Well, if that's the case, you have to specify a column. Notice that with this expression here, just the square brackets, this could be potentially a measure called date that does something else. It has just the square brackets similar to the total sales. So it's a little confusing onto whether this would be a measure or the date column. As a best practice, you always want to use the fully qualified name and specify the date column. And so that would be the date table date column would be the correct answer. You always want to specify where your date list is located. That's the date table date column when you're using time intelligence functions. So the final expression would be calculate total sales from the same period last year and get those dates from the date table date column. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.